And three, two, one. YouTube, we're back. Jim, I mean, Pario Jim. A little, <laughs> little Master Wong kind of thing there. Um, we're a little bit post class. Uh, we're going to go do a video again in there. Um, I got to I answer a question that was on my website, Real Tag. They asked me about, since I was a former cop, what do I believe about aggressive force if somebody came at me with a knife because they saw the YouTube video? Um, somebody comes at you with a knife and you're able to defend yourself, kill them. That's my view on aggressive force. I'd rather go home to my family and get arrested and then articulate to a judge how somebody came at me with a knife than be worried about you know, defending and incapacitating a guy. So if your intent is not in the game to end somebody else's life and safety when they're trying to take yours, you know, if somebody comes up to you with a knife, I don't know if they're going to rob me, um, kill me, do whatever. I'm not taking that chance. If I can run, run. If I can't, then I have to protect myself. You don't go for a knife disarm. You don't go for any kind of you know uh, weapons tactic. You go to kill them. So it's as simple as that. Uh, I'm not advocating violence and then I'm advocating self-defense. So for legal purposes, if you look at this, what I'm trying to say is defend yourself, okay? End the threat. And if that results in uh, violence and death, then so be it. I'm sorry, that's how it has to be. I'd rather be tried by 12 than carried by six. Um, so in the last couple of, well, probably the last uh, two years, what's happened is we've had people from other Wing Chun lineages come in here. And I have to go opinionate on this. There's no other way of doing it. Um, I, the stance is what's been driving me nuts. I grew up with that, the, the original stance of the 70-30 weight distribution. You, know, you shift and you shift, and everybody's balance and whatnot is going to be a little bit different. I'm flat-footed with an instep. You know, I wear Converse shoes, and I'm incredibly comfortable. You know, they don't offer any arch support because I don't have any arches. So my first teacher used to say, you have to keep all nine points of your foot on the ground. And when you shift from one side to the other side, you have to have all nine points of your foot on the ground. Okay, that's fine. Then I got into the 50-50 stance where you're in 50-50 weight distribution and you stay there. For me, I absolutely think this is essential. There's one reason why, I'll get to that one reason why. Um, if you look, if I go into 70-30 and I put a pole through my head, down my spine, out and into, the, into my foot, I'm perfectly in line. When I shift to the other side, I have to settle to get into that. Settle to get into that. Well, I'm divided down a line right here. This is my, my uh, center line right here, right in the middle of the floor. If I shift like a tripod, if you picture tripod's legs, you know, this is part of the reason we do the first dance too. You have that energy going down to the ground there. When you shift, it's still rooted into the ground. You have that 50-50 right down the middle. And if you look, my spine is no longer aligned into my heel. It's actually into the ground there. So the one default thing is if we constantly say as teachers, um, see them down, see them down, see them down, the first form, I don't know when you open up your stance, where in the first form do we do a 70-30 weight distribution? So if we are absolutely going back to the first form as the reference point for anything, Eric is fixing the toilet back there, we're at Goality Fitness. What, we have 50-50 weight distribution. So shouldn't you maintain that in everything you do? And if you just turn one foot out, don't I have that weight distribution? That's my first argument with that. So I had guys from, no disrespect guys, I'm sorry, William Chung's lineage and then uh, Lung Ting's lineage. The issue was two things. Number one, if you watch William Chung's lineage, they do a bunch of stepping in and they step all over the place. The more you take a foot off the ground, if Jim and I are doing any type of movement, we're rolling, great this and that, the second I take a foot off the ground, I lose that stance, I wind up stepping backwards. This is where shifting comes in. When I feel bigger, stronger energy come in, I have to shift. And your shift has to be able to keep you rooted in order to do other movements. You're not gonna have smooth, clean shifting in a fight, it's never gonna happen. You're not gonna get this, somebody comes in, shift. You're gonna be, oh, I'm bunched up. Can you stay rooted or move and step minimally in order to recover. Not stepping and stepping and stepping. It's not gonna happen, it doesn't work that way. And if you look, let's just say Jim is here and he pushes, you push into me. If I shift 50-50, and if you, can you see this way, is it good enough? Or mm -hmm. If you see I'm 50-50, I'm still good to recover because my axis is still online. So it's all about rotating the axis. If I shift 70-30, he pushes in, now, I'm sorry. If you are a Wing Chun master and you can do the 70-30 and you think, oh look, all my weight is on my back leg and then I can spring off of it, <laughs> good for you. You're going to be great at Chi Sao. In a fight, no, I'm sorry. You're going to suck. 
The recovery is what you're looking at. Jim pushes in, he's aggressive. I go 70-30, mm -hmm. spinal structure, hip in the ground. This is training. Application is a different story. 50-50 adjustment, I can move anywhere I want and hold that stance, drop back to a different position if I want to. It's just too much time in between changing that, leg, that uh, weight distribution. Lastly, what's been giving us a horrible name in Wing Chun? Water. What's that? Do the water. Do the, do this, be like water, thank yeah. you. This has been giving us horrible um, a name in Wing Chun lately. This is what I keep running into with the, with the lung tin lineage, is the elbow over the top, and we'll change this way. So a lot of guys have been doing this, and, and Keith Kernspett, as much as I, I think he's fantastic, he's guilty of this. To see them go, and they do this back fist over the top, good roll, comes over the top, and then boom, boom. But if you see, my back is facing the camera now. You don't think a good Wing Chun guy is going to scoot or to find that? Wing Chun is about facing. And the second you give up your center line, you're screwing yourself. So understand the difference between uh, energy and application. Okay? The be like water is supposed to be, you know, I'm finding one of my water points. And I, I, I think of four points that I do chi out. Wrist and whatever comes out the wrist, my fist, bone, palm strike, or elbow. So if water can't find something, I've got to find a different channel. Different channel, different channel, different channel different channel, different channel, but I'm keeping everything center line. Okay, I'm not giving up my back. Oh look, I got him here. Got Jim here. I got Jim here, I'm gonna annoy Jim. What the hell's that gonna do in a fight? It may develop your sensitivity, provided you are understanding why you use it. So don't don't think you have good Wing Chun and then go out, because honestly, I, well, I lost two students from these two schools because they accused my Wing Chun of being a little bit more hard and karate-like. Well, yeah, because we're trying to develop fighting skills. So if my Wing Chun is on center and I develop power, I want that to be my Wing Chun. I, I'm, I'm almost 40. I don't have time to sit there and, and fight with somebody who's in their 20s based on sensitivity. Oh, look at my sensitivity. It's great. <laughs> I want my first punch to come up and I want that strike going on. That I can hit him before he hits me. I don't want that, oh, look at this. Oh, I feel you here. Great, I get that. That's where cheese how it's fun. But remember, Wing Chun is that first movement. Okay? If I punch Jim and he pox outs me and it's solid, then I transition to something else. Okay? If I punch him though and he hits light, blow through it. That's your Wing Chun. If you don't have that structure either, okay, if I punch, I have 70 30, not gonna happen. If I punch 50 50, then. <laughs> I have a better chance of winding up using that power on there. So this is my opinion. Remember, I'm opinionated. It's my Wing Chun. It's not your Wing Chun. It never should be. Um, that's what I want to go over today uh, was um, the 70-30 split. For me, doesn't work. But keep in mind, I'm flat-footed with an instep, and I grip the ground, and then 70-30 just is you move your axis, and it just doesn't apply in a fight for me. And then the relaxation. Relax in the fight. You're relaxing. She's how it's good. It's fun. It's a good learning tool. You know, you could be like, oh, where can I, oh, look, I gotta recover somewhere. Look at this, oh, I found this. Oh, Jim's been moving, you can defend. Okay, great, oh, look, I got him. Oh, look, I got him. Here, oh, yes, great. But that's, that's, that's fun chi sao. It's not, a, you know, chi sao's applicable for a fight. So, we'll see you in the next video. We're gonna be covering um, fitness for Wing Chun. Should you lift weights? Absolutely, but I'm gonna explain the difference between what style of weights to lift and what not. Okay, there's going to be like bodybuilding versus explosive movements for Wing Chun, which we absolutely want to do. Got a lot of videos coming up for the front in the future. Um, shameless plug for the day. <laughs> Six to midnight rock.com. It's my favorite Chicago area band. <laughs> go and look. They rock. We go to their shows. Jim and I saw them a year ago, two years ago. Two years ago? The best friggin' band in Chicago. Six to midnight rock.com. All right, we'll see you in the next video on YouTube. Thank you.